Hello everybody and welcome to Doing Stuff and Things Utah Edition. Now this is part two on the road trip from Salt Lake City down to the Coral Pink Sand Dunes. Last week I uploaded the video for the Belly of the Dragon, which was that big weird cave dug under the road. Totally worth the stop, real short stop, which made it even more fun because now we can pack way more adventure into one day. What you might not realize is all these adventures are done over the course of one day. I end up camping at the sandstone caves and then driving home the next day, but I basically hit the belly of the dragon, the sandstone caves, and the coral pink sand dunes all in one day. So that can be done, and it's pretty awesome. Right now, we're going to see something called the sandstone caves. The picture of it looks amazing, and it's right offside the road, so it's not a huge detour from our primary objective, which will still give me plenty of time to see the coral pink sand dunes. But that video is being uploaded next week. So for right now, check this out, The Sandstone Caves, Utah. I forgot to mention, the Macquai Cave. This was a bonus adventure on this road trip. And I don't know if I'm saying that right, but that's how I'm gonna say it. So the Macquai Cave sits right next to the Sandstone Caves. And I thought originally that this was gonna be like a cave system or something to check out. Turns out it's just a museum. It's cheap, it's only like seven bucks to walk through, and they have fossils and all kinds of artifacts, and most of it is a natural cave that they built stuff around and onto like 100 years ago. There's even a bar in there. They don't serve alcohol anymore, but there is some history around the Macquai Cave. I passed on it because it wasn't exactly what I was looking for, and they didn't let me park in the parking lot to access the sand caves, which are like right around the corner from it. So we're moving on. We're going straight to the sandstone caves. Check it out. There is his tail dragon, right? And these are his little feet claws. And since the claws are pointed that way, I'm pretty sure he was going that way. And they are pretty busy. But the size of that tail, I bet this was a pretty big lizard. It'd be sure nice to find him. Fingers crossed, moving on. This is a problem like everywhere with campers and hikers. You guys gotta quit doing this. If you're doing this, stop doing this. That is toilet paper. Look at that big old pile back there. Complete with messed drawers and a big beetle. Look, I get it, you're out and about and all of a sudden, you gotta go. You're a human, it happens to all humans. But for the love of all that's beautiful and sacred, if you gotta go, bury it. Kick some sand over it, put a rock on it. 
cover it up so it's not just a blazing pile of doo-doo and all your business just sitting out there for everyone to see to sure eventually decompose but in the meantime it's just sitting out there for everyone to see that is appalling don't do that bury it cover it conceal it leave no trace basic stuff we're getting close Okay, so no matter which way you come, pretty much all the trails seem to converge right here. This is how you get up into the caves.
Okay, so clearly the easiest approach for these caves is from the Marikwai, or the Morikwai, whatever, the Morikwai cave side. Um, and it's just right there. If you park all the way down there, that's fine. It's a sandy walk. Otherwise, you can park directly across the street and cross the street. But also, it looks like climbing the rocks, if you have little kids, like the people who are coming up right now, or maybe you're just not very sure on your feet, you're better off climbing this mountain from the Morikai Cave site. I, am I saying that right? Morikai, Morikai, Moriki. I'm gonna say Morikai, I don't know. From that side. In fact, that's where that family went down. They're going all the way down to the end to climb that gentler slope. But if you have good shoes and you're, I don't know, agile, you can come up the steep side. It wasn't a problem for me and I'm wearing pretty good boots. So as far as roadside attractions go, I would say this is definitely worth the stop. I mean, you can make it as long or as short as you want. I bet if you parked right across the street, you could do this whole thing in 15 minutes. Otherwise, you could do like I did, <clears throat> park all the way down, hike up the wash through the sand, look at the lizards, and make it take an hour. From what I understood at the museum, these are old mines, so they're not natural. But despite that, it's still a pretty neat little area. It's fun to see, especially if you're just cruising by and you have the time to kill. I don't know if I would drive all the way out here just to see this, but then again, there's so much stuff to see right here in the general vicinity, definitely stop and check it out. In fact, we're about to go see something else right next door. Stay tuned. Yeah.